My work for me, please. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, Good morning. I'm just going to start here. It's, it's funny to be in the front and actually seeing like, how people are spread. And, and I'm usually the one choosing a, you know, the last corner, being in the back, and then the people in the front always saying, could you just move it together? And I'm like, oh, yeah. But I understand now. <laughs> Anyways, I'll, I'll hope to... Um, Do you want to use it now? Uh, Do you want to do it? Um, I, I can, or, or just next click. Uh, did you want to go? No, click, Sorry. Click. I can also just click. It's not a big I'll thing. It's just the page. Yeah, yeah, I will do. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, so that's my first, that's my starting sheet. I don't know if you, can you see it very well? And so it says, can you remain stable in the stable? And guess what, my topic, I'm talking about the nat nativity, um, basically basically Jesus' birth in the stable. Um, and this picture here, you can't really see See Vera. It's not a like a typical, you know, Mary and Joseph in the in the stable with um, with uh, a donkey and whatever, and then Jesus lying in the wooden manger. Um, but this picture is from you guys probably know for the Chosen. It's a Jesus series, um, basically just filmed. Really, really cool. Just seeing about um, Jesus' life and a uh, life and. If you're interested in it tonight, they're gonna to have a special uh, release, and they do they show the Christmas story. So if you're interested, you can download the app and um, just uh, watch it. I don't know at one at one a.m. You can always watch it afterwards. Can't you? Hey, then you can watch it afterwards. It's not just that. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, my three points today, if one thing you should remember about this breach and that will actually help you is find, trust, and stay. Yeah, that's like the, um, yeah, the point. <laughs> um, hey? I can, oh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, I want to ask you guys, do you know some, or have you been, were you born in a very special or like not a normal place or do you know someone who, were, who was born at a, a unique place or have you heard of a story about someone giving birth in a you know maybe in a car we were really scared about laura getting birth in a car maybe because her her kids they came so quick <laughs> but thankfully it didn't happen <laughs> Yeah, she know anyone? Yes. My, sis, my sister's yes. uh, first child was born in a car. With the, uh, it was the vicar's wife. It was the vicar's wife. She had never met before, and they became really great friends. That's that's so. <laughs> that's so. Oh, that's so cool to have a personal like. A, it's an amazing experience, isn't it? Wow. I guess. I mean, as experience, or like, oh yeah, oh yeah. My sister, my sister's not, not a Christian, so it's really great to know that she's got that friendship in yes. her life. Oh yeah, and you know, you don't know what's happening, you know, it can yeah. affect it in the very long term. Yeah. Beautiful, nice. Anyone else can think of it? Yes? as well giving birth in, a, in an airplane oh. and you know you always think uh, the, 
the kids they have um, their whole life when they drive uh, when they fly fly with the airline they they can fly for free but apparently it's a rumor I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean the, yeah I think these birds that we heard, just heard about is like um, yeah it can happen every now and then and um, but if you think about the uh, third world countries that basically he worked in townships and rubbish dumps and they just give birth over there, you know. They have just one little room and um, built with paper and all of, all sorts of stuff. And it's, it's, can you imagine that? It's crazy. I mean, probably not everyone has been um, has given birth to a child yet. I have, and you guys, um, you can hear about it now. So. <laughs> um. Yes, that's me. So, uh, this is where I had a good day. You can see I'm smiling. <laughs> um, so yeah, when I when I was pregnant, I remember um, I had a really really tough time. I was especially the first trimester. Nora knows all about it as well. Um, I was just feeling sick and emotional, and it affects just everything around you and. You can't you can't see clearly, and you're just so negatively um, affected by it. And poor people who live around you. <laughs> Doug, he was amazing. He's just he was bearing with me. <laughs> well done, well done, you. Um, and and yeah, I I felt so I felt sick constantly, and. And it is so, and I don't know if you have felt like, I mean, not, not in context of being pregnant, but generally, if you, you've been feeling sick or if you have a disease that is constantly affecting your life or your day, everyday life, it is so tiring and so dragging. It can be really hard. Um, and I also, I felt, I just wanted my family around because... I don't know, I just felt so vulnerable and I, I had obviously friends and people, but family is just close to me. And oh, for those who don't know, my family is in Germany. And, and, and to the point where I was like, you know, I could even, you know, leave Doug for a bit and go to Germany. I don't care. Like, I would prefer to have my sisters around who went through the same thing and my mom. Um, so, yeah, that, that was really tough. And then I had days really where I cried. I had a reason to cry every single day. Not sure if you know if you've been in this place, in, in a place or in the season where where you had just you know feeling so low and down for any reason, and um, you crying, and um, you just don't know what to do, and you just feel just you can't go, you can't move on. Um, yeah, and then our house, uh, we lived in a flat in an old Victorian house, which is cool, but, you know, when you live in it, you can feel actually the, all the, you know, the cold and, um, and you didn't, you didn't get warm and the bills, like the utilities, everything, it just felt, while I was pregnant, it felt so much harder and it was weighing on me so much more. And um, towards the end of the pregnancy, um, I, you know, you get most most women they get into this nesting season, and they want to prepare everything for the baby, and um, prepare, make a nice room. We did. We had only a one bedroom flat, and um, so he had to be in our room. And I was like, okay, it's fine. I can do this. Um, put up the bed and everything. And, in decor and then when I found colors not matching together I would it was such a big deal to me and I'm like oh man it's not, it's not perfect and 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 um, my baby is coming here and you know you have these you know comparing with other you know posts on Instagram they're putting this amazing this baby you know baby room and you like can't compare this with mine um, and yeah so I like to be really planned and organized and to be in control and 
I don't know if you you feeling at, at times like, oh, it's your it's a, your character like to be. I want everything set. I want everything perfect to be. And if it doesn't doesn't work out, it's like your world breaks down. <laughs> Which I, <laughs> I feel, for example, um, this is just um, the situation right now. I'm like, on my preach, I don't have it all, you know, I don't feel perfectly planned and everything. And I was really stressing about today. <laughs> so um, just have grace with me. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, and then, so just, just before Labour was born, COVID hit as well. So I was like, what's happening in the world? Gosh, this is, I mean, it was all fresh. So you were thinking maybe, you know, in a couple months it's all over. Um, thankfully, we didn't know how long this is going to take, to be honest. Um, but then my mom, she was not able to come because she was planning to come for two weeks around the birth. And so I was like, oh my gosh, all alone. And then um, lockdown hit as well, so we couldn't see anyone. Um, and and I just felt in you know a bit disappointed. I was like, God, like do I deserve it? It's just my first pregnancy, like my first experience. Why does it have to be so negative? And then um, self pity, you know, comes in, which doesn't help at all because you're just thinking all the like negative things, and and it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't help you overcome and um so and then the day oh sorry nick i was just <laughs> is it has it stopped now recording no okay nick next slide the day 12th of april 2020 uh labor benaya anderson was born on resurrection sunday um which was really beautiful so that was a bit of a like a, ah, how yeah like a um little redemption moment and and <laughs> and so during the birth don't worry I'm not going to go into ugly details <laughs> I um I, I just got to the point where I was like I just want to escape I want to leave I can't do this I you know you're just like trying to to get over it and I had um I had the gas mask and it, it makes you numb and I was like, I just want more of it. I just want to pass out. I just want more. And like, I breathe and breathe. I just want to pass out in this cave and leave. <laughs> you know? And you might be in some situation as well. You might have found yourself in some situations where, um, not giving birth, but, um, you know, any situation where you're like, I can't do this anymore. I just want to leave. I'm, I'm out. I quit, hey? <laughs> so, and then obviously baby was born labor and then you get this, oh my gosh, relief. Oh, how cute and beautiful. And, and you think, ah, oh, we are done. We, we are over, we, we made it, you know? But then you, you're actually experiencing life with a newborn and you're like, I can't sleep, like I sleep an hour and a half maybe in, in a, um, at a time and then you wake up and again and again and you're like, this is never ending. No one's really told me, you know, you know, it's hard to, you know, raising a little, you know, newborn, but, but if you're actually going through it, you're like flipping heck, how the heck, my mom's got six children, how did she make it? I, I don't understand. Um, <laughs> and in the nights, obviously, Doug had to work and he couldn't really do anything because I had to feed him. So, you know, so we, we decided, Doug, you go in the lounge, have to sleep there, and I just manage in the night. You take him in the morning so I can have a little rest or evening, whatever. And um, so I was in the nights waking up, feeding labor, and sitting there, like, sometimes really crying just because you're tired and you're like, so alone, I don't have anyone, yes, I have Doug, but it's so, so sorry, I'm being dramatic, but it was dramatic, it really was, <laughs> it is so real, isn't it? you, you, yeah, got some as well, <laughs> but, um, next slide, please, you know, but 
like, he was just amazing, really. I got just, I have the best husband. In the beginning, he, he tried to do everything. <laughs> he tried to do everything. Household, this and that. And he tried, he, yeah, so, sorry guys. It's, it's also like, you guys are in a situation where maybe guys feel sometimes uh, more responsibility about if you, especially when you're may, maybe married or you have a family or about, I don't know, maybe being a man is like, you got to, you know, you got to got this, you got to be strong and stuff. And, um, yeah, so Doug did amazingly, but he crashed as well at some, at times, which is so natural and so normal. Um, next slide, please. So, to finish about that story for now. I was wondering about the Christmas story about uh, Mary and Hay. I had I had questions. I was like, how must Mary? How must she fe have felt um, when they were traveling? She was. Uh, we're gonna jump to the story. I I reckon everyone knows the story, but after this, we're gonna read actually through the story. Maybe you can follow better. But um, they were best basically traveling to go to Beth Bet Bethlehem for the census. And she was pregnant, like in her last stage. And they were walking, they didn't have cars. I couldn't really sit a long time. And so she was on a donkey. I, mean, I can't imagine how that, how, how was that for her? And um, was she emotional? Did, did she feel vulnerable? You know, um, how, how was the labor then actually giving birth to a king? Was it easy? Like, because it was Jesus? You know, it could have been like, yay, the king, everything right. But then, but then she gave birth in a stable. So you're like, the king of the world, you know, being born in the stable. Um, how, is, how is Joseph in the whole process? You know, was he strong and supportive? I think he was, but you don't know. You know, he, he might have been overwhelmed at times as well. And they couldn't, they couldn't find a place to actually settle and give birth. And... They weren't, they didn't know where, where it's going to, uh, yeah, when they, um, the, the inn or the, they, they didn't find a room to stay or guest room and they just were without a plan. So totally, uh, what's the word? Pardon? Yeah, they, right, they had to be spontaneous and totally like, okay, God, you got to do something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the the main thing, what what was she thinking about? You know, when the angel appeared to her, she was going to give birth to the king of the Jews, the promised uh, king that that's been promised for ages um, from the prophets, um, which that what they have prophesied, um, and because. When, when I think about me, if it, you know, you think about your baby, what is it going to, you know, is it going to be a special boy, like a really kind boy? But if you know, like, this is a king and he's going to save the world, crazy. All uh, right, next. Oh, uh, can you read this? Yeah? So anyone wants to put up the hand to read? Yeah? Um, please. So, Luke 1, 26, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town of Galilee, from 27, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom, his kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. 
Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me, to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Thanks, well done. That was quite a bit. We have a little bit more because we've got to get to the base story next time. Everyone else, anyone else would like to read? <laughs> um, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius, who was governor, uh, was governor of Syria, and everyone went to, the, to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to, uh, in Galilee, to Judea, in Beth to, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Whilst they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for him. Thank you. Thank you. So, I thought... I thought that um, just reading all of this just gives the whole kind of stories to understand. And I mean, what I've been talking about before, there's nothing really in, in the Bible a lot telling about Mary, about the whole process. And I was thinking if, you know, if this book was written by a woman, maybe she would put in a bit. <laughs> but we could equally ask, hey, no, no, sorry, <laughs> ask, um, uh, you know, ask about Joseph, how, how was it like for him? Um, yeah, so the, the last bit, uh, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first son, uh, for her sport, firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Um, yeah, again, as I said before, can you imagine a king being born in a stable? Like all the, the expectations and all of this um, about a king, about the, the, the Lord of the Lord or the Son of God, you just, you just think, you know, about a palace maybe or like a well-prepared place. But Jesus came in a dirty place um, to the world. He went so low, so he can reach all of us, everyone, like no matter where your background is from. If you come from a, you know, really broken family or poor family or rich or really just also a wonderful normal family. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to Jesus, everyone is valuable and everyone is he looks at everyone the same and looking back to Mary the the other slide sorry yeah perfect the way she receives you know, the angel comes to her and he tells her that she's going to give birth to a son and you'll call him Jesus and, and he's the son of the Most High. And she, obviously she's like, how can this be? She wasn't even married, she was a virgin and, and um, obviously supernatural through the Holy Spirit. Um, she, she got pregnant and her response was, I am the Lord's servant, may your words be uh, may your word be me. May your word to me be fulfilled. So she, she just received it and accepted it. Yeah. So, and I, I think Mary is such a good example of how to how to get through, like to through a hard season. I know there's not a lot written about it, but just the simple way of her submitting and like 
receiving. It's just so beautiful. So, and now I get, I, I come to my three points. First one, it was find, find Jesus in the moment. So if you find yourself in a tough place, really hard situation, you're struggling with people, with yourself, and everything around you goes down, or, or it doesn't even have to be, or you're just leaving, you know, living normal life. Find, can you find Jesus in the moment? Can you find Jesus where, you, where you're at? And um, that's, that, that scripture is really beautiful as well um, to describe. It's, it's basically saying about Jesus, who's being in a very nature, God, God um, did not consider equally with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing but by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross that happened later on when he died for us. Um, and, and it started when he came to the world solo, being, uh, being born in a stable. Can you find Jesus in the midst of your chaos? In the in in those moments where you where you're really struggling and and yeah so when you think about the story can you um can you find Jesus in your stable no matter how it looks like because he, he understands you he knows he knows where you're at he knows the place the broken place where you you at or where you're coming from. Um, that's great. Yes, that's a good start. <laughs> Come on, then. You can you can start actually. I was just, oh yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, if you would like to, why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. Um, and it also says Nick talked about it. Um, last week. Uh, God is Emmanuel. Uh, he's Emmanuel, God with us. And that's a promise God made us. And so we come to our next point. Trust in God's promises and surrender to Him. And uh, Mary received the word from the angel and she is like, I am the Lord's servant. She, she humbled herself and she received it. And in Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Um, in all your ways, acknowledge, which means to know and submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. What does it mean to surrender? Giving up control. Because what do we do when we want to control situations? Like sometimes we use manipulation or, or we're trying to, um, uh, to like plan everything ahead and have it all together by our, like in our own control, in our own strength. And but the key is actually surrender to Jesus because you don't have to do this alone. You so in some situations you can't do it alone because you need Jesus and. And you got to trust that, that that he's coming through because that's his promise. And if you believe it and trust it, he he will make your path straight. He will make a way. There is always a way out. There is always a light at the end. And I I was also looking up the word uh, surrender. It means stop resisting to an enemy or opponent and submit to their authority. In this case, you're not submitting to the problem when you give up. You're submitting to Jesus. And that's so, that's like, in the, you can't be in better hands than Jesus. And the, some, you know, some people, they, they've received some promises of Jesus and they can't see them fulfilled. And they're like, God, you promised it, and it says it's going to, you know, your promises, they come through. 
and you don't see it happening, what, what do you need to do in this case? You just be coming to the next point. Stay faithful to him and the words that he said to you. As Mary, she when she received the word or the, the news, she said, may it be with me in accordance with your words. And, and later on, th throughout Jesus' life, you can also see Jesus, uh, Mary was so faithful. She believed in the words that God gave her that Jesus is going to save the world. And and she just hold on, held on to it. And only 30 years later, Jesus started actually acting, you know, um, making miracles, wonders, like publicly that people could see it. And she knew it. And, she, and it says also later that she kept it all in her heart. And she just remained faithful. And she, I, I, she might have had seasons where she, she was doubting. She's like, is this really happening, you know? And when you just can't see things um, that were meant to happen, you think, in your head, but they're actually not happening. There's, there's so much power in the acceptance and, and trust and being faithful. And, and this, is, this requires a response from us. Are you, are you willing to stay in? Are you willing to push through? Are you willing to go? Go ahead and really trust Jesus and find him. Find him. Because he's, you know, sometimes he comes so like a baby. And if you don't have to accept him to show up like like the king. That's, that's expectations or our view. But sometimes he comes so, so, so small and so low. But he's there and he is still the king and he's still as powerful as uh, we imagine to um, a, a king, a savior of the world to be. Yeah, so I just wanna, want you guys to you know, just think about it. We're going to have a little quiet time and Isaac's going to play a little bit and think through, you know, the things that are going on in your life and how, how do you respond to it. How do you go through it? And and if you're gonna, yeah, are you staying? Are you staying in it? And um, yes, in James four, uh, in James four one verse four, let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be ma mature and complete, not lacking anything. If we remain faithful, uh, faithful and persevere. We eventually get get there, you know. And and those those seasons they just they just make us help us grow. We're learning. I also heard um a someone said you know God God didn't when when the back in the Old Testament when the Israelites were standing in front of the the sea. God didn't just made it disappear, but he split it the sea so they could actually walk through through it. So God helps you to go through it. And Jesus, Jesus sees you and he, he is not far away. You just have to find him. Yeah. So let's let's have a little time and then Doug's gonna take on. So maybe, maybe you are feeling lost or lonely, or you're going through a space where you just don't feel like um, you can see Jesus or find Jesus in the moment. Like, the interesting thing is God's finding us as much as we're finding Him. Um, the second one is trust. So you're ba battling with trust. It could be trust with some relationships. It could be trust with the people around you, community, government, life in general. Um, you know... There's someone who you can trust, and that's, and that's Jesus. Um, uh, God is worth worth trusting. And then the third thing is, um, uh, can you can you stay faithful? Um, can you can you stick it? Can you stick through the hard times when uh, when when it's just so easy to push the eject button and, and pull out? 
It's like, pull out, pull out, pull out. And with Michal, I remember her saying, like, stop. I am going to Germany. I'm getting the next flight out to Germany. I'm out, like. Um, and uh, that's, that's tough when you're hearing that as a husband. Um, I'm like, I'm not good enough. I want everything you need. Um, and yet Jesus, I remember Michal just putting on worship and just worshiping God. Like, I remember her finding Jesus in those moments where it was super tough at night time. She's encouraging herself with, like, like friends who are overseas who are going through similar situations, and they're sharing the story. Sometimes you just need to share your story. Um, and uh, the one thing about Makal, man, I'm married, a woman who is, um, what, grit. She's like, you know when you're like someone who, who like, endures? She is in for the, she, she's coming from another country. She's gone through loads and loads of, of, of emotional disconnect. All of her friends, left all of her friends to marry me. I'm like, come on. I am that amazing. But, uh, but it's been hard for her. And I've watched her just choose Jesus and choose to, choose to find Jesus. Choose to stay in the game. And choose to. Um, trust in God. So Father, I just ask God that you would be with us in the same way, that we would find you, Jesus, in the craziness, in the mess, that we'd find you. And Jesus, you're not hard to find, but I pray you open our eyes to find you. Father, I pray that you would um, help us to trust. Where Maybe we've not we've been betrayed, or maybe we've, we've lost trust because people have done stuff to us, or Church has done stuff to us. Father, I pray you'd restore trust. Father, I pray you would restore an ability to stand when everything else seems like it's failing. Um, we're going to do communion now. Um, and if you believe in Jesus, um, if, you're not, if you don't believe in Jesus, then don't take communion. Because there's actually a, that's funny, there's actually a curse that, uh, it's like you, you're actually heaping, anyway, I won't go into it, it's Corinthians. If you, um, but, but, but be, 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 it's a holy moment when you, when you take communion, when you take the bread and the wine. It's, it's, it's reminding yourself of uh, who you are in Christ and what Jesus has done on the cross for you. He's paid for it all. Um, so we're going to do this communion. Um, also, if there is sin, or if you feel like you have forgive, unforgiveness between brothers or sisters, or someone you, you know, there's, there's unforgiveness, make sure you... Make sure you do the bread and make sure you forgive before you take the bread and wine because there's also another scripture that talks about you know getting, you're getting sick among you because you, you, there's unforgiveness or there's disconnect between you and someone else in the church or in the community. Um, and sometimes you can't resolve that, um, but you you can you can forgive. Um, you can't govern another person's uh, response to you, but you can forgive the person. Um, so, Father, I just thank you, Lord God, as we take communion. If um, Chris Collin, if you don't mind, sharing Josh, you can as well. I don't know. Um, Laura, do you want to help out? Um, feel free to. You don't mind just holding on to the bread, holding on to the wine. <laughs> oh, Sam, Sam needs another piece. He's already charted. You don't mind holding on. We'll do it together. I'm not sure it's gluten free, but you know, it, it'll do. Oh, it's true. Gluten free, guys. Gluten free.
And uh, so we in Jesus' time, actually, it was around food, so we're not actually eating food. Uh, but if you were in Jewish culture, you'd probably be having a massive feast. Um, and this, Jesus would be like, uh, probably pick up a big chunk of bread, as opposed to look at like this. But this is, you know, for us. Um, and, and Matthew 26, 28 says, uh, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and when he gave, he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body. Um, then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he had given it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. And this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the wine, wine from now until uh, now and on until that day when I drink it new with you in, in my Father's kingdom. That was the last time Jesus ate and drank before he died on the cross. Um, and uh, and he gave us this tradition, which we still keep until Jesus returns, which we believe is going to at some point. We don't know when. Um, but it's this thing of like um, taking the bread, which represents his body, and taking and, and taking wine. If you don't have wine, you've got grape juice, because we, <laughs> we have people who struggle with alcohol um, uh, in the area, so we pretend to go for something that's not alcoholic. Um, but we... But this is this is this is in commemorance of Jesus' blood and what he did on the cross. He took all the sins of the whole world, everything wrong with the world, he took it on his shoulders um, to make a way that we can have a relationship with God. So um, everyone together, because we are the body of Christ, um, between you and God as well. Can you pray for us? Grape juice, wine, which is represents Jesus' blood. Cool thing about this is that whenever I drink this, I think of the fact that many sheep are not dying now because I'm actually able to drink this. Before this, before Jesus was, was um, bled out, they, they had to sacrifice lambs. Lots and lots of them. Um, so yeah. Cheers to all the sheep that are okay. <laughs> uh, but also, we get we get forgiven systems. Um, yeah. Father, thank you so much for each person in the room. I pray a blessing. If you don't know Jesus, or you've never given your life, life to Jesus, this is a good opportunity to. Um, and so, if you if you never given yourself given your life to Jesus and said, Jesus, I'll commit to you um, as much as you're committing to me. Um, yeah, this is a good opportunity. So, yeah. Thank you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Thanks, Doug. Okay, I think that's it for today. I'm just going to pray. There's a um, traditional prayer after communion, which often uh, the church has said over the years, which is... Uh, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And it's good to maybe say it together. Should we all jump up, stand up, and kind of just make that declaration? Yeah, so after three, one, two, three. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Amen. Amen. Okay, see you next week.
Yeah, I'm going to